today we are going to talk about the smallest and the most fragile bone of our facial skeleton or our visceral cranium. This is the lacrimal bone or the os lacrimal. It is present in our eye socket. Well, this bone is as little as our fingernail. We can say that the lacrimal bone is a paired bone, meaning that there are two bones present in a facial skeleton, the right and the left lacrimal bone. Okay, first things first, if we dissect the name, the word lacrima is Latin for tears. This bone is also called os lacrimal, or sometimes differently spelled as lacrimal bone with a Y. So this bone is called lacrimal or related to tears because it is closely related with the nearby lacrimal structures or the tear gland structures. So basically we can see that it supports the lacrimal sac which is the upper dilated end of the nasolacrimal duct and is lodged in a deep groove formed by the lacrimal bone. Okay, so side by side, it also supports the lacrimal caniculi or the lacrimal canals, which are the small channels in each eyelid that drain the lacrimal fluid from the lacrimal puncta to the lacrimal sac. This forms part of the lacrimal apparatus that drains the lacrimal fluid from the surface of the eye towards the nasal cavity. And this is how our lacrimal bone makes up the nasolacrimal canals. It is also said to be located at the medial wall of the orbit. Okay, before moving forward and discussing the articulations of the lacrimal bone, let's recall all the facial bones. Since they're all correlated to each other, so it's very important to know them as well. So my friend Max the Skeleton will take it from here. Hello, I am Max. I am back to tell you more about facial skeleton. Facial skeleton is a remarkably interesting part of our skeleton system. This part is made up of eight bones. I know it is difficult to remember the names of all. So, I bring you a quick facial bones mnemonic to help you remember them. My mouth's palate never liked, zucchini, in, vinegar. My, for maxilla. Mouths, for mandible. Palate. For palatine. Never. For nasal. Liked. For lacrimal. Zucchini. For zygomatic. In. For inferior nasal conchi. Vinegar. For vomer. You can find detailed lectures on all these bones at scadia.com. Thank you, Max. He's always bringing interesting information for us. So now that we've recalled all the facial bones, we can now better understand the location of the lacrimal bone. As you can see, these are the lacrimal bones. They articulate with four other bones of a facial skeleton. Two of these bones make up the cranium, which are the frontal bones and the ethmoid. And the other two articulations are with the maxilla and the inferior nasal concha. Always remember that the lacrimal bone forms suture with all these other bones. Do you recall what are sutures? Sutures are immovable fibrous joints which are mainly present in our skull. Now because of the location of this small bone, the fractures of the lacrimal bones are not very common. But if the lacrimal bone is fractured, it can cause the obstruction of the nasolacrimal duct. Now this increases the pressure in the duct and cause injuries to its walls. The increased pressure within the duct presents with watery and irritated eyes because the tears cannot drain normally. Now let's head on to the next section to learn about the little details about this small bone and see all the anatomical features, the surfaces and the borders. Well, I keep on saying that it is a small bone. So you must note that it only has 
two surfaces and four borders. So the two surfaces are the medial and lateral surface and the four borders are the anterior and posterior border, the superior and inferior border. Basically, this medial line will define the right side and the left side of a face. As you can recall, the lacrimal bones are paired bones. So this means that it will be present on both sides of her face. One on the right side and one on the left side. But for this lecture, we'll be only focusing on the right lacrimal bone. So let's zoom in and look at the general views of this bone. So here we can see the literal view of the right lacrimal bone. The literal view can be called the side view as well. Then we have the medial view which is towards the midline of the body. Always remember medial and midline. That's how you can remember this. Lastly, we've got the posterior view, which is described as the view from the back. Now let's take a closer look at the two surfaces of this bone, which are the lateral surface and the medial surface. First up, we can see the lateral surface, which we also call the orbital surface, because it faces towards the contents of the orbit. But how can we tell that this is the lateral surface? Now, when we see this lacrimal bone, we can notice a vertical ridge called the posterior lacrimal crest. This is a defining feature of this surface. It is very important to note that this lacrimal crest gives origin to the lacrimal part of the orbicularis oculi. Although some sources claim that this lacrimal part of this muscle is not that defined, so the main origin is usually attributed to the frontal process of the maxilla. But it is to be noted that this orbicularis oculi muscle helps in the closure of the eyes since it surrounds the eyelids and basically goes down towards our cheeks. This orbicularis oculi muscle is the only muscle reported in literature to find attachment on the lacrimal bone. Basically, this crest divides the lateral surface of this bone into two portions, the anterior part, which is grooved, and the posterior part, which is flattened. Now zooming into the anterior part, we can see that it is related to the lacrimal sac and the lacrimal canuculi. Moving towards the posterior part, which you remember was the flattened part, we can see that it makes up the posterior wall of the orbit. So moving back to the main features of the anterior side we can observe that this longitudinally positioned groove is present. This groove is called the lacrimal groove or the lacrimal sulcus. This is basically a deep groove in front of the opening of the maxillary sinus. If you guys remember, we talked about this when we studied the maxilla bone of the skull. So to know more about this maxillary sinus, you can head on over to that lecture. Basically, the inner margin of this sulcus unites with the frontal process of the maxilla and in this way forms the lacrimal fossa. Basically, the upper part of the lacrimal fossa accommodates the lacrimal sac, whereas the lower part contains the nasolacrimal duct. Now, on the posterior side of the lateral surface, we have another important anatomical landmark which is shaped like a hook called the lacrimal hamulus. And as you can see that it articulates with the lacrimal tubercle of the maxilla. So in this way, the lacrimal bone and the maxilla enclose the lacrimal caniculus. A very interesting thing about the hamulus is that sometimes it is present or it exists as a separate piece than the lacrimal bone and it's referred to as the lesser lacrimal bone. 
Then we have the medial surface, which is also called the nasal surface because it faces the nasal cavity. So on this surface, we can notice a longitudinal furrow, which basically corresponds to the posterior lacrimal crest that was present on the orbital surface. Now towards the anterior part of this furrow, there's a portion of the bone that forms the part of the middle nasal meatus. The middle meatus is basically an air containing space that is part of the nasal cavity. Whereas the part located posteriorly to this furrow articulates with the ethmoid bone and in this way encloses some ethmoidal air cells or the ethmoidal sinuses. Basically these ethmoidal air cells receive nerves for the secretion of the mucus. But don't worry, they will be discussed in a separate lecture in detail. So overall, we can see that the medial surface of this bone is forming the medial wall of the orbit. So if we take an overview about the surfaces, we can see that this is the lateral or the orbital surface and this is the medial or the nasal surface of this bone. So let's recall the four borders of the lacrimal bone. Basically, they were the anterior border, which is present on the front side of the body, the posterior border, which is present on the back side or towards the nasal cavity, and then we have the superior border, which is present on the top side, and the inferior border, which is present on the bottom side. First, we have the anterior border. This articulates with the frontal process of the maxilla. Secondly, we have the posterior border, which articulates with the orbital lamina of the ethmoid bone. This is an especially important component of the medial wall of the orbit. Next, we can see the superior border on the top side. This articulates with the frontal bone. And at last, we have the inferior border. It is important to note that this is separated into two parts. The posterior part articulates with the orbital plate of the maxilla. And on the anterior part, this border houses a descending process, which is this extension here. Over here, the lacrimal bone articulates with the lacrimal process of the inferior nasal concha. And so these two bones get together to enclose the bony canal for the nasolacrimal duct, which is called the tear duct. So if we take a look at the borders in the different views of the lacrimal bone, we can see that this portion is making up the anterior border. This portion is making up the posterior border. On the top, we have the superior border. And on the bottom side, we can appreciate the inferior border that is represented in red. So we saw that the each surface and each border of the lacrimal bone has its own important features. Let's sum them up in a single diagram. If you recall, this was the anterior surface of the lacrimal bone and this was the posterior surface, which was divided by the posterior lacrimal crest. This posterior lacrimal crest gives origin to the lacrimal part of the orbicularis oculi. Now focusing on the anterior surface, we can remember that it has a lacrimal sulcus. This is a groove which houses the lacrimal sac. And the inner margin of this groove unites with the frontal process of the maxilla. Now also articulating with the maxilla, we have this hook-like projection called the lacrimal hamulus. It articulates with the lacrimal tubercle of the maxilla completing the upper orifice of the nasolacrimal canal. Right next to it, we can observe this extension, which was also called the descending process. Basically, this articulates with the inferior nasal concha, making up the inferior border of the lacrimal bone. Now, moving back to the posterior part, we can remember that it articulates with the ethmoid bone. And okay, you can remember from the top, it articulates with the frontal bone. So this image gives us a very good overview about all of the things that we discussed in this section.
So all these bony landmarks that we talked about function in the process of lacrimation or crying. So if we recall, the lacrimal bone helps to form the nasolacrimal canal that is necessary for the tear translocation and they form the medial wall of the orbit. So this brings us to the end of the lecture. Now you will be quite familiar with the different borders, surfaces and the anatomical features of this little bone that we call the lacrimal bone. So for more lectures like this, you can browse our extensive library of over 1500 lectures. So you will surely find what you're looking for. So stay tuned on scaria.com.